So for Marx, religion uh, is just a way for the bourgeoisie to oppress the proletariat. Yeah, uh, Marx and Engels both appreciated Darwin's writings primarily because they saw it as as destroying teleology, that is the idea that there's purpose in nature. And so they yeah. saw it as a uh, support for athe an atheistic worldview. And so they saw this as a, a good thing that it basically undermined religion. Uh, that's really the key point that uh, Marx and Engels could take away. In fact, Marx did not like the struggle for existence idea of Darwin. And he actually, in his uh, correspondence, uh, with Engels suggested that maybe another alternative kind of biological evolutionary theory might have more merit. It's a, hmm. it's a view that no one is really familiar with today. It was a guy named Pierre Tremot, a Frenchman, who posited that uh, the geologic conditions of various places were what caused evolution of uh, biological species. Uh, but so Marx didn't really like the, the struggle for existence idea. Of course, Hitler, the struggle for existence idea was central. Uh, to his thing. And by the way, let, let me go back up and say this. That actually is why uh, a lot of Marxists in the late 19th century, mm -hmm. and I, this is my, what my dissertation was on, embraced Lamarckism, which was the idea that there's the inheritance of acquired characteristics, not uh, hard heredity like Darwin had posited that was then passed on uh, over through competitive struggle. So uh, anyway, Hitler embraced the idea of uh, racial struggle. Uh, interestingly, though, Marx did have a notion of struggle. And in fact, Hitler actually made a comment about this at one time. Hitler claimed that the, the main difference between uh, his ideology and Marxism is that Marxism believes in class struggle and Hitler believed in race struggle. And that is one of the key differences between them. Hitler, I mean, excuse me, Marx, with his class struggle, believed that everything's based on economics. Everything's based on the economic system. Yeah. And so it's all about class struggle going on. Uh, Hitler, however, thought that it's all about racial struggle. So it's all about racial identity. You know, and what's fascinating, where we're at in our culture right now, I just got a new book yesterday by James Lindsay, the atheist, or now agnostic, used to be neo-atheist, but with neo-Marxism coming in, um, you know, people are starting to, to wonder about the, uh, the survival of the fittest civilization now. Um, where where neo-Marxism seems to be every bit as preoccupied with race today as neo-Nazism does. And so his book is called Race Marxism, whereas, you know, classical was, yeah, class Marxism, right? Mm -hmm. So right. For, for different reasons. Um, yeah. You know, I, I got the impression also in your book that uh, the Nazis, along with Hitler, uh, or at least a great number of them, and I wonder what the connection is, were not materialists, but pantheists of, of sorts, whereas Marxists are are often seen to be materialists. Do you find this to be the case? And so why? Yeah. Uh, when I did my investigations of uh, uh, Hitler, it became clear to me that he was venerating nature and really exalting it to be God. And if you look mm -hmm. at the way that he talks about nature in Mein Kampf, for example, uh, he does make it out to be a God that is, and when he, when he uses the term God, sometimes he uses the word nature interchangeably in the context. It's very interesting. But if you and if you look at how he thinks about morality too, Hitler thinks that mor the way to be moral is to follow nature's laws. And he thinks the most important nature's laws is the struggle for existence. Uh, so uh, Hitler embraced a view of pantheism. At least that's the closest I think we can come to pinning him down. He, uh, you know, is a little... Uh, slippery in his ideas about religion. And he, he did occasionally make comments to try to uh, appease the, his society by claiming to have some kind of Christian con, uh, uh, beliefs. But if you look at all those comments that he made positive about Christianity, they all came before he came to power uh, and were clearly uh, aimed at his society and culture and trying to win them over. In fact, we know that he had private conversations at the same time where he made negative comments about Christianity, but publicly tried to, you know, look like he, he was, was a good so politician, bad. successful. Exactly. Politician. Yeah. He was a cosmic politician. Yeah. He was playing to the people. And he even said this one time to Martin, uh, who was it? No, it was Hess, Rudolf Hess. When he was in prison, in Landsberg in 1923 to 24, he even actually had a conversation with uh, Rudolf Hess where he told him 
uh, that we need to, you know, not alienate people over religion. We need to be careful about that, you know, and not, you know, get into that topic. So he just tried to avoid the topic for the most part or occasionally make little comments hmm. positive for it. Uh, so Hitler was clearly not uh, in line with Christianity. Uh, and in his monologues later on, uh, and, and Himmler in his, excuse me, not Himmler, Goebbels in his diaries, Rosenberg in his diaries, makes it very clear that Hitler often was making anti-Christian statements. Uh, and it's it's very clear to anyone who's interested in looking at it. Marx, on, and so again, but not against God. Hitler never denied that there was a God. Hitler never claimed to be an atheist. Uh, in fact, he very often uh, spoke negatively about Marxism because it was atheistic. Uh, and so he saw that as being a negative thing about Marxism. Mm -hmm. uh, Marxism, of course, uh, Marx himself said that religion is an opiate of the people, uh, opiate of the masses. Uh, Marx saw religion as being a part uh, of the class struggle also. So for Marx, religion uh, is just a way for the bourgeoisie to oppress the proletariat. So what you do as a bourgeois or earlier the aristocracy when they were in charge, whoever the ruling class is, you promise the oppressed class pie in the sky by and by so that we can oppress you in the here and now. So that's basically how he's uh, interpreting uh, religion.